This is from Moss and Mirth Farm. She is a organic flower farmer in BC. And recently she's just started to selling her own seeds. So I um, was about a week from ordering to shipping and then to the ship. No. Uh, so I ordered November. Okay, so it took a week from ordering to shipping and then from shipping to delivery. So about two weeks. Canada Post is low. Oh, very nice. I don't know why I thought it smelled um, like, you know, stationary, like old stationary spirits. Just double check the uh, information here. So I ordered I ordered November first, and it was the Canada Post received it in BC November fifteenth, and then I received it probably so okay so three weeks. But it's her first time selling seats, so I'm not going to hold that against her. Okay, so I have uh, Scutillaria Altissima. Very nice. So Scutillaria Altissima Skullcap, Balkan Skullcap. They look like salvias, uh, but well, they almost look like snapdragons, but they're going to be blue. You see the theme here, blue. And uh, they sometimes they're also used in traditional Chinese medicine. I don't know for what. So if they're herbally, then the rabbits will, won't want them. I have Draca, Dressa, Dressasiphylum. It's a blue dragon. It's called blue dragon. Common name is blue dragon. Indigo blue, blue dragon head. So blue plants, blue flowers. Man, I'll just put post it there. Um, so you can see what it looks like. Oops. Well, it's open. It's a lot of seeds. Okay. Where are you? You are... Oh, broom corn, that's why. Broom corn. I have broom corn. It's a nice, really nice filler. Extra element. I got some GM. Okay. It's a perennial. And I think this one is red glazing GM. So it's red. It's a perennial. Um, I should. I'll probably winter sow them. Well, I'll, I'll just hedge my bets. Uh, winter sow half of them, and then the other half I'll uh, I'll start indoors. GM. This is Lunaria, so honesty plant. They will flower white in the spring, and then if you leave, if you don't cut them, it will, it will, um, it will form those seed pods that look like capiste shells that uh, that shimmers in the light and it's perfect for Christmas but I think these are biennials so I'll winter sow them they'll come up uh, in the spring plant them in the summer by next spring they will bloom and then by fall I'll have those next fall I'll have those shimmery seed pods Selena uh, what's the other name for it but they, they make good fillers. They're airy. They look like kidneys. 
they look like uh, puffed well I'll just post it there but anyway I just like the airiness of it it grows wild it grows in the wild so um, but it makes good cut flower so we'll, we'll, we'll find out and the next one is bat faced kufea um, why did I choose this? I think because it's blue. Yeah, they just look like interesting. So I've never seen one in person. That's why I bought it. There you go. All right. So that's uh, Moss and Mirth from BC. And apparently she will have more seeds, more seed varieties in the next couple months. So I'm looking forward to see how that goes. Next is Jelly Toe. It's a, this is a German company that specializes in perennials. I ordered from them before, and I think as long as you don't pay buy anything over $150, $150, then you don't charge, you don't get charged um, duty. And they're pretty quick too. Um, well, they will, they'll ship quick like within a week of you buying, but the delivery, um, because it's transatlantic, it usually be around three to four weeks. Jesus Christ. Well, it's well packaged. You can see, it's hard for me to open. Is there an easier way to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, what's the date here? I can. So I arrived October 22. I ordered it October 12th. So 10 days later, it was cleared by customs. Okay, so it wasn't bad. It also depends on the type of the um, time of the year you order it. Because if you order it now with all the Christmas shipping that's going on, it will take a longer time. So I did that last year. And uh, it took more than a month for the package to be delivered to me because it was installed in customs. Um, but if you buy, if you order from them um, in off season, but not, if you order from them like, when it's not Christmas season, it's usually about three, three weeks delivery from Germany to Canada. Well, at least in South, you know, Ontario anyway. So. In there, uh, when you order from them, they give you uh, an option if you want to purchase some tags too. So I thought it was helpful. Uh, they didn't cost much at all. And they all have the same type of packaging. And I like the way they're packaged because they're waxy. And, all, and air well, it's not completely airtight, but it's close enough that it's flat. Um, the packaging is waxy, so you know moisture won't get in there. They have the name, and each um, and they on their website they will let you know how to sew it. Um, if you have their catalog, you, you just refer to number fifteen, and um, that's how that's how you'll sew. It. So, for example, this is number fifth. Uh, sewing direction is fifteen. I look in Jolito. Hold on a second. So sewing direction 15, it means rapidly germinating, keep seed in constant moisture with temperatures of about 20 degrees. Seeds must be covered thinly. It's not cover very small seeds, but tightly pressed into the earth. Keep in cooler conditions after germination occurs. So the, another thing that I like about Jolito is that I use them as a resource from when I'm starting seeds from other companies. Now they don't recommend that you, like Jolito doesn't recommend that you follow their their instructions, but I like to cross-reference different resources and then make my decision on what I end up doing and make a make a, an educated decision afterwards. So I don't know, I did buy quite a bit from them. Let's see if I remember, I probably won't remember because they're all 
I mean, they have no pictures and they're all inside of their scientific names. So let's see how much I remember them. So a triplex. That's because I just uh, referred to Shalito right now. This is a, uh, what's it called? Oh my God. Oh my God. Auric. It's a red leaf auric. Apparently you can eat them, but I'm getting the, you can eat the leaves like spinach, but I'm getting this for the flowers, uh, for cut, for cut flowers. It makes the, it has those grains that, um, that looks, it gives a textural, textural, textural feel, gives textural feel to the arrangement. Okay. And then I got Simis Effusia Racimosa. I'll put a picture over here, what it looks like. But I'm planning on growing this in the shade area of my garden. Uh, Coreopsis verticulata. This is Bacillia millifolium cassis, which is a yarrow. Um, cassis is, I think that's the magenta, magenta-ish looking yarrow one. So we've got that one. Another type of Bacillia, which is Parker's variety. And it's, um, instead of the more magenta color one, this is more yellow, cloth of gold. And I think with the, with with yarrows, apparently, even if they start as a pink, when they do interbreed, the seeds become more revert back to their wild form, which is white. But uh, the yarrow ones, they, they persistently stay yellow. Parker's variety, I mean. Gallardia, Aristata, Torch, uh, Fackelshine, Fackelshine, Fackelshine variety. They're pretty easy to grow on winter zone. Uh, this variety is taller than the ones that I got last year. So I'm looking forward to try this variety. Artemisia Ludo, Artemisia Ludovisiana. So it's a type, um, silvery type, like silvery sagey leaf. I'm gonna grow it for their foliage and I think this is supposed to be drought resistant or at least can tolerate dry bed, so dry bed, so that's why I chose this. Sanguisorba parviflora. Uh, I like the cattail portion of the flower. Well, I think it's only cattail. I don't know. I just I just want to grow a flower that has that, that shape, cattail shape. So I'm hoping that this grows. Uh, probably need, I think it needs some, yeah, this will be winter sown. Salvia Newtons. My friend Jane showed me a picture of Salvia Newtons and it looks interesting. So it's a tall type of Salvia. Instead of it being erect, it's more looping. So I thought that would be interesting to, to try. Got a Husker Red Penstemon. So they look like smaller version, smaller foxglove. Like smaller, like a small foxgloves, but long tubular flower. Good for pollinators. And um, they make good cut flowers too. Um, a, a type of stock, Mathiola and kind of pillow talk. So I was, I think this is white. Don't know why I chose this. I was probably just intrigued how, how it does as a, um, as a perennial. Let me double check that. All right. 
So this grows to 45 centimeter, which is about two, two and a half feet, no, one and a half feet tall. So maybe not really for cut flowers. Oh, well, we'll see. Uh, but they're perennial to zone five, so we'll see about that. I got carrots. I think I get two, few different types of carrots this year. Well, this is the first one, Carex muricata. And I think I choose this because it's for the dry. Why did I get you? Moist average soil. Oh, for shade, part shade. That's why. I want to use Carex to cover the shady area of my garden under the maple tree, just so there's something there to out compete the weeds that I don't want to go. Electrum. This one, I'm. They grow. How tall do they? This particular is electrum. Uh, the common name is meadow rue, but the variety is lavender mist, and it is fluffy heads of dozens of small lilac colored flowers, suitable for native native natural landscaping. Decorative architectural plant, uh, suitable for bed, background, and privacy screen. In other words, living wall, easy to grow. Okay, we'll find out about that. It is 150 centimeters tall, so that's about five feet tall. Wow, that's about my height. And likes moist, average, cool soil. And um, it needs some uh, cooling period to. To trim it. So I'll try to winter sow half of this and then the other ones I will put in the I'll sow, put in the fridge, and then try to grow it indoors sometime in the spring. Next, what's this? Succesa? What are you? The devil devil's viscabius. It is a medicinal plant, okay. Grows to 50 centimeter. Zone four to seven. Why did I buy you? Oh, I think I got this because in one of the magazines that I was reading, featured Succesa in um, in in one of their gardens. That's probably why I got this. I got Sisinricum. Sisinricum. Blue white grass. Uh, winter hardy zone six zone six to ten grows up to 65 centimeters so about two feet tall likes average soil full sun and I think I bought I got this because I was intrigued by the form of the leaves they're like grass like leaves but they have flower structure like um, verbascum and again probably from one of the magazines that I was reading that they recommended or that they listed as one of the plants that grew in that garden. That's why I chose this one. I got Vernonia lettermaniae. I think this is purple uh, that spreads out, sprawls out, kind of fluffy, cloudy. I like this. Uh, it's going to be winter sown. I got another Carex that likes shade. Carex Appalachia. Appalachica? Appalachica. Um, Sleepa, two types of gra other grasses. Oh, two types of grass. Sleepa Gigantea. Tall grass. Uh, the grains or the seed heads. It give you like that architectural feel, and if uh, if it's if it's backlit, it looks like it's sparkling in the sun. And then I also got the ponytails, angel hair ponytails. So they're tall grass, but with the well, like a pony hair. <laughs> Oops, I, I'm afraid. Well, they said that they're well. Some websites say they're from zone six, and another website said that they're from zone seven. So I guess we'll find out 
Um, this should be fast to germinate. I don't have to. I don't have to winter. Um, put them in the cool. They don't need the cooling period to germinate. Another type of sanguisorba. We'll see which one of them uh, grow better. I got the Bampton verbena. I like the verbena bonariensis. This one is um, smaller flowers. They said it's hard to depict, it's hard to see what it looks like in person, but um, well, in videos it just looks very interesting. So I'm interested in seeing what it looks like in person if I get them to germinate. This one will need some cooling, like a chilling period. And Leatris aspera. Um, Nicole from Flower Hill Farm showed her Leatris aspera that she bought as a uh, bare root plant. But I think this should be easy to grow. I mean, Leatris, is, Leatris in general is easy to grow. So instead of me buying a beer plant, maybe I can buy, I can germinate 50 and have 50 of them. So that's, that's it for Jalito. Jalito, Jalito. Okay, another one from the UK. Uh, let me just double check. I think this is from Plant World. ordered it uh, sometime in the last week of November. Oh no. Okay, so what are you? I don't remember when I ordered it. Maybe they have it written down here. No, I have an invoice here. Okay. So it arrived November 3rd. Oh no. It was shipped. It was... I ordered it on uh, uh, October 30th. And it was shipped November 3rd. Don't know how, well, we'll say three weeks. Three weeks from shipping to delivery to Canada. Um, I've ordered from them before and they have great selections of unique, unique, um, unique varieties. But the only thing is that they don't put USDA zoning. You have to do your research because they're UK based, they they put what they are, if the plants hardy to UK or to the UK zones or not. But uh, for us, for us here in North America, we have to do more research outside of their website. But anyway, oh, this is free. Got the free. They give you free seeds too. This is an aquilegia, which is a columbine, and I got aquilegia cottage garden mix. So maybe different. Um, different varieties of uh, columbine, so that's interesting. I got a campanula, ranunculus. I, uh, it's a biennial. And I'm, why did I choose you? I think I was just interested in campanulas in general. That's why I chose that. I also got more of the Carex Grayi. It's got, instead of, um, well, it got some flowers that are spiky. So I thought it was interesting. I have a uh, Carthamus Kinko. Uh, I think I already have one too, but this one, why did I choose you? I think this is, this has just a different leaf structure. Or maybe they're the same. I'll find out. I got another, um, another Clarkia double crown double mix. It's a uh, it Clarkia elegance. And I don't think, well, I think this is a, a, a form of Godetia. So this is a cold hardy annual that I that I will have to sow soon. Well, in, by January or something like that. I got a fes, fescue, Elijah Blue fescue. I just want some options when I'm for the garden. Not, not necessarily for cutting garden, but for a cottage garden in general. It's nice to have some varieties of uh, of texture. I have Lobularia. 
it's more like a it grows to 10 to 20 centimeters and so it's a cover cover crop that's not cover crop ground cover it's nice and purple we got luzula nivea uh, these ones i got last time and they wouldn't i winter sowed them and they and they germinate well but like i said earlier i didn't realize that well they got they got fried in the in the sun so uh, there's a one plant that survived and it's thriving well perennials grow slowly so they're a good size hopefully it'll it'll make it through the winter but i'm excited to see the form but a mature form and it'll be nice to have more than one of those in the garden so i bought more and I'll winter sow them again, but like I said earlier, I'll just make sure that they don't dry out. The seedlings that germinate don't dry out. This is a Lombata monarda. Uh, good for cut flowers, good for bees. And what are you? It's another type of Luzula, but it's more like a it's called solar flare so it's more like yellowy green what i like about luzula is that they are shade they can tolerate shade and it would be nice to have something uh, shade tolerant grass in the garden for texture uh, i also got some tarragon for it's an herb but um, i like the i like the form for cut flowers for full, for fillers this is a uh, penny royal. Penny royal. Uh, it's called an herb. But it's like um, it's almost like cat mint, but bushier. That's probably why I chose it. I got um, tanacetum, which is fever few. Uh, it's got a different type of form. So it's kind of spiky, spiky fever view. So I, I was, I was intrigued, and so I said, maybe I should buy you. It's another type of tanacetum, but it's red. Same family. Um, foliage looks looks fern, fern like. So it's red. It's fern like foliage. That's why I was probably attracted to it, and that's why I got it. Another type of stipa, which is elegantissima. Okay, so now I have three types of stipas. I know I've bought more. I bought um, Iceland poppies. I just don't know where I misplaced it, so I got some more. And this is Omphaludus linifolia. It grows about 30 centimeters tall. It's a biennial. So in the Borage family. Okay. Why did I choose you? I think it's because it's white and it's got some airy feel. Almost looks like a thelectrum, just smaller. Got Nemophilia menciaceae, mens menciaceae, penny black. It's a black flower. I had to see it in person, so I got it. <laughs> 